All right, you ready? Ready whenever you are. All right. On today's podcast, I welcome on a very special guest, Coach Jeff Battle. Uh, he is the assistant coach at Providence College. Coach Battle, how are you today? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Glad to be here. Uh, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. You got an awesome background on your uh, <laughs> on your screen of the PC <laughs> court. Uh, it's God. really cool. <laughs> the dunk. Uh, I, always, I always have to represent. That's right. That's right. You got the shirt on and everything. You're ready to go. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Coach, how how are you doing during these uh you know these Corona times? I like to call it. Um, you know, I'm doing okay. Um, just uh, the biggest thing with me is I've been able to find a routine. Um, you know, kind of stick to that, and uh, you know, still get stuff done during the day, but also try to get you know try to get some exercise in, try to you know maximize my day as best I can. So that's that's kind of worked for me. So uh, from that standpoint, it's been it's been pretty good. That's good. That's yeah. It's, yeah, I think it's a good time to try to keep busy. It's it's a new like a new norm to find a somewhat of a different ro- routine, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, coach. Before I uh, get into some questions about PC, I want to get into about your basketball background, your coaching background. Um, but how did you get into basketball itself? Wow. So. Probably, you know, growing up, I grew up in Philadelphia, played basketball, uh, I don't know, since I was eight, nine years old, and just kind of, you know, from there, growing up in the inner city, just fell in love with the game, always knew I wanted to be a part of the game, whether that's playing, whether that's whatever capacity I could be in, and um, it just kind of stemmed from there, you know, played in high school, and was fortunate enough to go to college and play in college, and then, uh, you know, the bug hit, the coaching bug hit probably my junior year with while I was in college and I uh, was fortunate enough to, uh, to get into business and, um, you know, kind of, kind of go from there. That's awesome. And what's it like, you know, growing up in Philadelphia, I feel like Philadelphia is another basketball Mecca. Like what's it like playing in that, like that world of like it being like such a big sport down there? Uh, it's very competitive. You know, there's, there's great players all over the city. Um, you know, it's funny, I grew up and I didn't even play AU basketball. I never played AAU. Um, but the summer leagues and, and just playing in all the competitive leagues throughout the city was was very competitive, like I said. And, um, you know, so there's there's just so many great players that have gone on to do great things. And the, the history of the basketball, like you alluded to, is just uh, it's uh, it's big time. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really that's really cool because Coach Martelli had said the same thing, too. It's just like he couldn't wait to play in the CYO and the summer league. It's funny. That you both Philadelphia guys come <laughs> now are now in Rhode Island, come on the podcast and everything. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> um, you know, and you played for Marshall um, as a point guard, and you led them to two consecutive NCAA. You helped lead them to two NCAA tournaments. What's that like? What's it like playing in the tournaments and having that feeling? Uh, it's 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 awesome. It uh, there's nothing like it. Everybody in the in the country is looking at you. Uh, all the attention that's on you and your program, it's, uh, you know, it's awesome going to the open practices. That's the thing that I always remember, you know, having all those people watch you practice and, um, you know, all the immediate attention that goes with it. And then just the magnitude of the game, you know, the intensity level, knowing if you lose, it's one and done. And, um, you know, the NCAA tournament is probably the best, you know, uh, you know, postseason tournament or whatever that you can uh, participate in. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's gratifying. It's exciting. Uh, all in one thing. That's awesome. Yeah, it's got to be really cool. That's an experience. I think like a once in a lifetime experience that, you know, a lot of people don't have a lot of chances that they say they've been able to experience or play in, you know? Right, right. That's cool. And you said you got, you started getting the coaching bug at a, in, you know, your junior year of college. Um, what's that like? Cause you being a point guard, you're already like an extension of the coach. Is that where it came from? Or like, how did that come about? Yeah, pretty much, you know, like I said, when I was a junior in college, I kind of started thinking about my, my life after college and what I wanted to do. And, you know, I didn't think, obviously, the NBA was something that I was going to be able to do, but I knew I wanted to stay involved in the game. I knew I loved the game, and I was always curious as to the, you know, the, the, the strategy behind the game, you know, why, why coaches do what they do, um, what makes things click, what makes teams work, the chemistry, um, all that kind of stuff was always intriguing to me. So, um, you know, like I said, after my junior year, I actually went to my, my college coach and I said, coach, you know, I think this is something I want to do. And he kind of signed off on it. He said, you know, I, I think you'd be really good at it, you know? So um, I kind of took off with it from there and was, you know, was involved in practices, obviously, but asking questions and 
even to our assistant coaches, developing a relationship with them in terms of basketball, picking their brain. Um, so it just kind of took off and stemmed from there. That's awesome. And what's that transition like from going from like player to coach? Um, it's hard because as a player, you know, you want to, you know, how you, you have control over things. You can control things a lot better. Um, as a coach, you kind of, you know, you can instruct and teach, but at the same time, you can't, you can't do it for them. So, you know, after a while, you have to get to that point where you're saying, okay, I can't, you know, he's not going to be like me, the player, you know what I mean, as a coach. So you kind of got to, you know, find your niche and how to get your point across to players and um, get your message across and that kind of thing. So, uh, but the key word is patience. You know, you have to be more patient, obviously, as a coach than, um, than you were as a player. Yeah, yeah. I feel like um, I, from going from a player to a coach, because I, I coached high school for a little while, it's it's interesting too because you have to learn how to be a teacher as well too. It's like you can't just I guess some everybody le- learns differently, so you can't just keep showing or something like that. You're right, exactly. playing like what the moves yeah. for. Yeah, yeah. Every player is different. Everybody learns different ways. So exactly. What's it? And then what's it like? Like um, you know, learning from all different coaches and then taking it into your own coaching style. Well, you know, I've been fortunate to be around a lot of good coaches, a lot of good basketball minds. Um, but you're right. You kind of take, pick and choose what you like, what you would use, what's worked for them, what would work for you. Um, at the end of the day, you have to be yourself. You know, your personality has to come through. Um, you know, players pick up on that if you're trying to be somebody you're not. Um, so you got to kind of find your own niche, you know, and kind of run with it and, um, you know, kind of be who you are. Yeah. It's true. You have to. And I think, I, and I asked the same question to Coach Martelli, and he said the kind of same thing. He's like, you have to figure out who you are as a person. And it's, uh, it's, in, it's intriguing that like a lot of guys say that because you could copy a coach, but you have to be yourself too, you know? Yeah, no question. I mean, you'll take bits and pieces of the people that, that you've been around. And, you know, obviously they're really successful people, but, um, you know, when it comes down to it in terms of your relationship with your players or whatever, you have to be true to who you are. That's true. It's, that's it's true. And I think that's like in any real life situation too, if you get to be true to who you are, you can't just be, you can't right. act. I can't start acting like you, you know, <laughs> in a real life situation, you know, I have to be myself. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what you wouldn't be a bad thing to act like you. <laughs> that's the choice. <laughs> <laughs> so coach, you were a part of these, amazing Wake Forest teams, teams that were ranked number one in the nation. What is that experience like being that high in the nation, coaching some future NBA players such as Jeff Teague, um, you know, working with guys like that? It was awesome. Um, Those guys were, you know, everybody talks about the success, you know, you know, the coaches get all the success and stuff like that. Um, When you're so, you know, so successful at a high level, like you said, being ranked number one, you know, a couple of times and, um, you know, having all that, but those guys, those guys you just mentioned, Jeff and, you know, Ish Smith and all those guys that we had there at Wake during that time, um, you know, Chris Paul and on, 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 um, those guys put the work in. So they, they made it work and they made us look really good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I talk about that all the time. You know, people always ask me, what was it like coaching this guy, that guy, that guy? And, um, I said, Hey, they, they made me look good. So you know, I'll, I'll ever be, you know, always be you know, indebted to those guys because they make you look good. You know, coaches, coaches are good and this and that, but you know, at the end of the day, the players are what makes it happen. So uh, we were fortunate enough, you know, during that stretch to have some really good players, great people um, and successful, you know, even to this day. That That's awesome. That's really cool. And what was uh, Aaron Roundtree like? Cause he's him and I are good friends now. So what, what's it like? What was it like coaching Aaron? So I could, any good stories I can bring back to him or anything like that? Ah, oh, that's my guy. I mean, I, I love that. Man. <laughs> no, 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 seriously. He's one of the guys, he, he has a great spirit. You know, he was always upbeat, you know, no matter what he came to practice every day, you know, with his hard hat on, with a smile on his face. He loved the game. Um, he was a jack of all trades, you know, could do a little bit of everything. So, um, uh, I love Aaron, and uh, it was great to see him play. You know, this past week, you know, this past month or so, whatever in the uh, in the tournament, the TBT tournament thing yeah. there. So uh, it was great to see him play in that as well. Yeah, Aaron's a cool dude. Um, he was like, when I spoke to him on my, my on my podcast, he was so personable, very funny, like just such a just like a candid person, and just like uh, you know, uh, not. It was just awesome. We had such a great conversation that we were like, we have to do this again. So like, he was just such a cool, like, 
just such a laid back. He would never know that he played pro, pro ball or just the way he acts. He just seems yeah, like yeah. just a chill yeah. dude. Yeah, he hasn't changed. He's the same guy. And uh, like I said, I don't, you know, he, he's very, very uplifting. Yeah, yeah. It was it was really cool to talk to him and get to know him. So it's, he's a cool, he's a very nice guy. Same thing with David. David was another guy. He's playing out in Japan now, I think. And he was just the same thing, like just a very nice, very polite guy, awesome, intelligent like well-spoken person just like was really cool to talk to as well too coach some good good players some cool guys <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 that's a good and, and you hit the nail on the head too they're really good people yeah and i think you know you know everybody talks about the basketball side of it but they turn out to be you know i'm proud of the people and the young men that they've become as well yeah they're really they're awesome you get like, lucky to coach them and be, know them be friends with them and so coach I want to know like now what was the transition of like going from North Carolina to coming to PC you come to a smaller state what's what's that like well you know I you know it is what it is in terms of the size but you know it, it's been great for me because I've been able to connect um, with coach Cooley you know who a lot of people know he's you know very special to me he's a, he's a very close friend uh, we've been friends for a very long time and, um, you know, even when I was, all those years when I was at Wake Forest, you know, I would follow him, his career, and, and we would always talk about possibly working together one day and, and if that could ever happen. So, you know, when that happened, you know, four or five years ago, and, you know, I ended up here, it was uh, very emotional because we're really close. And so the transition, you know, from North Carolina to here has been a lot smoother just because of my relationship with him. So, um, so it's been good. That's, that's great. And have did you ever think you'd live in a state where you can drive from one end to the state to the other in like 45 minutes? I uh, never thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> Easy travel, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, you know, in the coaching world, you kind of go where you have to go. Yeah, know? yeah. So I never even thought about it. Like, hey, you know, am I going to drive here, drive there? You know, where's my office? Where's the gym? You know, yeah. let, let's, let's find a house and let's, let's dig in. You know, that's kind of how it goes. So Yeah. That, that's awesome. Well, we're, we're, you know, we're glad to have you in Rhode Island and I'm, I know that you're happy to be at PC and that's awesome. Um, but you know, you said you're happy and excited. So what's it like to be a part of that URI PC rivalry? It's great. It's great. It's great for the state. Um, it's great for you know the city of Providence and, you know, it, it generates a lot of interest and, and fanfare back and forth both ways. And uh, it's great college basketball atmosphere, whether we're playing there, or we're playing at the dunk. Um, so I, I think it's great. I think it's great for the state. Again, like I alluded to, um, you know, we're, we're good friends with their coaching staff. You know, I know, know a lot of guys on, on their staff and uh, friends with Coach Sutton there who's a good friend of mine yep. on their staff. And, um, you know, so we, you know, we're, we're good. You know, it's, it's competitive. And um, again, I just think it's great for the game. That's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome to see those games and um, so much fun, so competitive, so much like they're like uh, the, the crowd noises go crazy. It's 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 so cool to uh, be a part of it. So I can't imagine what it's like to be on the floor to be there, you know. <laughs> so it, uh, it's pretty good. You know, it's, it's great atmosphere, like I said, and, um, you know, being there on the floor and um, that's the great thing about college basketball too, being a coach, you know, you're, you're right there in the action, um, you know, for any, anybody that wants to, you know, a fan, a typical fan, that's, that's where you want to be. And, um, you know, so it's great. It's a great atmosphere. And, um, you know, we look forward to that game, you know, every year. Yeah. Yeah. You, yep. It's, it's awesome. Everyone, I think everyone feels the same way. We all look forward to it. It's always tough to buy tickets unless you're a season ticket holder. They're always sold out, but it's awesome. And um, I want to ask you about last season, Last season came to a short because of coronavirus and everything. Um, you know, how did you guys feel? Because you guys were like the hottest team in basketball at the time. Well, it was it was very uh, you know frustrating for our players. You know, especially mm -hmm. our seniors. Um, they were devastated. You know, we were you know at the Big East tournament and you know we're told that you know, they've been canceled and we had to get right back on the bus and, and um, head back to Providence and then we. You know, just like that, we're in a locker room and we're, we're saying goodbye to our seniors, you know, and hugging those guys. It was very emotional. And um, I just felt bad for them because they had, they had put themselves in a position um, to do something special, you know, in the Big East tournament and, you know, possibly going on to the NCAA tournament. And um, you know, the fact that we didn't have a great start of the season and we ended it the way we did and, 
you know, beating five top, you know, ranked teams and yeah. just had a bunch of momentum and, and, and the chemistry was there and guys were buying in. And so, you know, and, and just to have it gone and just, you know, just like that was, was very frustrating. And um, again, I just felt really bad for, uh, for the guys more than anything. Yeah. I, I honestly, that's, that's tough. That's tough for those, those kids. You feel bad for the seniors. Cause it's not, no one wants to end their basketball career like that. Not where you don't want to go out like that. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. It's tough, Correct. but you know, it's, it's unfortunate too. Cause I think from our, from a fan's perspective, then uh, maybe from Rhode Island's perspective as well too, I think we felt like, PC actually had a legit chance to make a deep run into the NCAA tournament. Could have made a lot of noise. I know uh, a lot of stations have picked you guys to go pretty far, and it, it's, it's tough. It was tough to see that happen because once we're Rhode Island team gets in, we all get we all kind of we all get behind it, no matter if you're you or I, a PC fan. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, it's crazy. But um, are you excited for you know next season? Get ready. How do you guys feel? Yeah, um, you know, obviously we're dealing with the pandemic right now and, um, you know, hopefully we can get our guys back on campus here soon in a few weeks. I'm very excited to see them first and foremost. Haven't, you know, seen those guys since, you know, March. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, March 12th, something like that. So um, excited to get them back first and foremost. But, you know, we like the group we have coming back. We think we have some really good pieces. We're excited about the team. And um, hopefully we'll get a chance to play this year, and um, it should be uh, it should be exciting. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for basketball to get started. Hopefully, you guys get back on the court and just pick up back where you left left off last year. Um, you know that it's got to be. I'm sure you're looking forward. Is there a way? I don't know if you can answer this. Uh, if not, then uh, is there a way you've been keeping in touch with the guys and just kind of communication or? Yeah, absolutely. We uh, we have team zooms every week. Um, you know, we, we reach out to them, you know, individually, of course, you know, during, during the course of the, uh, of the day as well. So we're in constant communication with them, making sure they're in a good place, you know, especially mentally. Um, with all that's going on in the world right now, it's easy to just sit around and, and have negative thoughts going through your head and, you know, wondering if we're ever going to play again, am I going to be back in school, you know, what's going to happen, what's my future look like, and so on. So we're, we're in constant communication with our guys and, um, you know, they, they, they're in a good place and they're all just excited to get back to campus. That's awesome. Yeah. And I hope we can get, the, you guys can get to campus soon and like, you know, hopefully things will work out very well. And is there like a way and say, think like if you can't answer, I understand. I know there's compliance, but is there a way that you build like camaraderie with the guys, like the recruits coming in and the guys that have been there through the zoom meetings or anything like that? Or is it just kind of wait until they get on campus type deal or you guys do like team meetings and everything? Yeah, you know, we do the team meetings, um, we, you know, the Zooms, and, um, you know, we can also do basketball stuff with them over the Zoom calls just to kind of get them, you know, get them in that right frame of mind. So the, big, the one thing that we have been doing a lot of during this pandemic is communication, and it's uh, probably made us over-communicate, which is good. So yeah. the dialogue has been good. Um, you know, the guys also, you know, they, they group text each other. Um, so they're, they're creating their own chemistry amongst each other. Um, with all the social media stuff like that, Instagram and, you know, all the stuff that they do. Yeah. So, uh, so everybody's been, been able to stay connected, you know, through this whole thing, which is, which has been good as well. That's awesome. That's great. And that's a great thing to hear. And like you said, over communication is not a bad thing for sure. Especially nah, not at all. Not at all. Yeah. Uh, coach, uh, that's all the questions I have for you. I really appreciate your time. That's uh, it? Yeah. I don't know. You want to talk, we can talk more. I mean, I've, <laughs> I'm trying to be, <laughs> I'm really enjoying the conversation. I just don't, you know, I have some sheets. I don't want to ask too much. I don't want to push the limit, you know. <laughs> hey, I, hey, hey, it's nice. Nah, no big deal. Hey, like I said, we're in a pandemic. I got nothing but time. Oh, so. uh, yeah. Well, we can talk basketball. I mean, what do you think about the NBA season starting back up? Oh, I'm excited. I mean, I, I watched the scrimmage games the other day. And, and um, yeah, just, just to see some live basketball, I think is awesome. So, uh I'm a ball guy. I can watch ball 24 seven. And um, so I'm excited. That's awesome. Like, do you like, is there a guy that, is there a team that you think is going to win it all or like, or a team that's been helped the most with this rest? Um, you know, not really. I think that those guys are all so good. Now I don't think people really understand how good those pros are. Yeah. How hard it is to get there first and foremost, but just how good they are. I mean, yeah. those guys are all really, really good. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, nothing surprises me. And, you know, from having guys who I've coached that are playing in the NBA, 
um, just following them. And so I, you know, I watch a lot of NBA basketball. So I'm just amazed at how talented those guys are and how, how athletic and big they are to do the things that they can do. So um, I never could pick a team because I just think, you know, anybody can beat anybody. But um, so I just kind of watch it as a fan, to be honest with you. That's awesome. I, like, do you ever like when you're watching basketball, do you ever do you ever get tired of it? I mean, it's your job and like everything like that. You guys like, do you, are you around it so much? Do you ever just like need a break from basketball a little bit? Yeah. I mean, you do. Yeah. You do, but again, it's, it's funny because if it's a game on, I could be relaxing on the couch and still watching the game. Yeah. So to me, it's, it's kind of, it's less stressful when you can just watch the game as a fan, like I said, but if I'm working, watching a game, scouting, or something like that it's more yeah. intense so yeah now you're working but when i'm not working and i'm just able to watch the game as a fan and just kind of you know yeah, yeah you know just like anybody else yeah would, that's that's what i enjoy so, that's all that's great are you are you a six i can watch any ball I, I watch the WNBA. i watch uh nba i watch you know girls college basketball men's college basketball um yeah so i i i do it all oh man that's awesome yeah i same here i love basketball i grew up you know, playing it and been around it and been a coach and love attending the high school games and, um, you know, working with, I work with some of the local players around the area um, too for some skill stuff. But yeah, I, I can't get enough of it, especially like you said, it's like, it's when you're a fan, you're relaxed. But when you're, I feel like when I go to my old high school that I used to coach for watch my uh, the head coach, I used to work for a coach. I get like, I feel like I need to get on the bench and start coaching. It's hard. <laughs> It's hard to sit back and relax. I feel like I'm like my dad. Like I'm like, God, don't do that. You got the itch. I can tell. Yeah. Oh yeah. I love. I you know I love basketball. I love sports. You know and that's why I wanted to do this podcast because you know I don't think we a lot of people take too much focus on Rhode Island sports. I think when we take focus when it's like when we're winning and when we're doing well. And I think it. I think we need something that focuses on like the other aspects of like they like this. Get to know you as a coach and like get the fans more of the insight of like what's going on and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I think that that's the other thing that's happened a lot during this quarantine is, you know, the podcast, the, you know, everybody's kind of, you know, getting to know people more, you know what I mean? So if this wasn't going on, we probably wouldn't be doing as many of these as, as, we, as we're doing and, um, you know, getting people's different stories out there and getting to know different people and um, you know, how they do things, what makes them tick. Um, on on and on so I think it's been um, from that standpoint it's been really good too yeah it's been great I think that's that was like the biggest benefit I think about starting another podcast on top of another one that I do I've been able to get in touch with people a lot easier and like quicker responses I mean you and coach Martelli responded back to me like in the same day and I think coach Sutton like responded back to my text like right away like so it's been it was nice to kind of like hear from you guys like that it made me feel so like happy too because i'm like oh man this is like off to a good start already like glad to hear from the coaches in the local area you know yeah no doubt yeah yeah are you now are you a Sixers fan or an eagles fan big time big time big time big time Sixers fan big time eagles fan all philly all day all the time (laughs) so are you just like like when they won the super bowl you're you're just like you have no idea (laughs) <laughs> I actually put my whole office, I decorated my whole office with all Eagles gear, all Eagles par- paraphernalia, Eagles blanket, everything. And I made Coach Cooley walk in and just sit in my office. <laughs> That's what I did when they won. And so, yeah, yeah. And I made, him, I made him announce it to the team. You know, he had to wear the Eagles blanket when he talked to the team that day. Oh, no question. It's one of, one of the best days since I've been here. <laughs> Is Coach Cooley a, a Patriots fan? I'm taking it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I grew up a Rhode Island guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So, yeah so I, 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 I get it from everybody, our staff, and everybody in the office. I mean, I can't, I can't get away from it. So yeah. One, one day, one year, I had my day in the sun. So <laughs> I, I had to take advantage of that. That's good. I mean, you got the Sixers. The Sixers will look pretty. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while, but you know. We'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, you're away from the Tom Brady now that he's gone down in Tampa and everything like that. And yeah, yeah, you got, you got Cam rolling in too now, though. So yeah, that's true. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, it should be yeah, interesting yeah. how he does with uh, the Patriots. I'm not, I'm not a Patriots fan. But I'm a 49ers fan. So we uh, okay, we had a tough Super Bowl this year, but it is what it is. Yeah, yeah but yeah, Coach. Yeah, we have to. I want to definitely make my way up to a game and like 
maybe one day we can meet in person and um you know this has been awesome you're, you're sounds good, man sounds good you're so you're, what's that i said sounds good let's make it happen yeah definitely you uh you and coach martelli man you guys are top-notch guys honestly you guys were so nice uh to me and coming on the podcast and coming on the show right away um it means a lot to me and it means you know a lot to the podcast and hopefully we can get the podcast to a level that it needs to be where a lot of fans will be tuning in and listening to you guys and know all about you. Absolutely. Glad to do it. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Phil said a lot of nice things about you. He was so saying that you, he helped. He, he, yeah. Yeah. He was super bad. Uh, but you, all you Philly guys, I might have to start hanging out with you guys more often because you guys are nicer than the New England people. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that on this show. But... <laughs> I'm not messing with that either. That's going to get cut. That's going to get cut. <laughs> uh, Coach, thank you so much. I appreciate no I appreciate no you. I appreciate your time. And uh, this means a lot. And hopefully let's do this again sometime. All right. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. All right. Of course. Take it easy. Yep.